you use quantum physics every single day as you go about your life. And it's something you probably don't realize because when people talk about quantum physics, including me, we tend to emphasize the more crazy aspects of it, like particles that can be separated by the size of the universe and still communicate with each other instantaneously, or when particles can be in multiple places at once or multiple positions. And this tends to make quantum physics seem like this really strange, abstract, crazy kind of physics that doesn't have much to do with our everyday lives. But this couldn't be further from the truth. So this is a list of five ways we use quantum physics every single day. Number one on the list is the entire basis of the modern world. It's computers. And computers wouldn't exist if it wasn't for our understanding of quantum physics. The basic element of computer is the transistor, which is a tiny little switch. It's very useful because it doesn't have any moving parts in it, which has allowed us to miniaturize it and have billions of them on a single chip, all switching at billion times per second. Transistors use the special electronic properties of silicon, which is a semiconductor, and the rules of semiconductors are dictated by quantum physics. Now, electrons in a semiconductor can only be in certain energy states, and you can use these energy states to create on and off switches. Now, you can't do a whole lot with just pure silicon. You need to engineer these materials by adding in extra elements like phosphorus or boron to make materials with different energy levels. And by combining those materials, you can make a junction where normally electrons don't flow until you apply a voltage, and then electrons can flow, and that's how you make an on and off switch. And how the energy levels behave in these different materials, that's dictated by the laws of quantum physics, and we wouldn't have been able to invent the transistor without this understanding. Now my technology two and three are the screen that you're watching this on and also the camera that I recorded this on, which both also rely on the quantum physics of semiconductors. Most screens today are backlit by LEDs, light emitting diodes. And these are semiconductor devices that when you apply a voltage, an electron goes from one semiconductor to another, it loses energy and then emits some light. So LEDs have been gradually getting better over time and a lot of engineering effort has gone into making LEDs that are very bright and also white in color. Now kind of the opposite of an LED is number three, which is the sensor in my digital camera. That sensor is made up of loads of tiny little pixels called photodetectors or photodiodes. And these, when they receive light, they create a current of electrons, again through our manipulation of the energy levels in semiconductors. Part of the reason why these cameras have kept getting better with more megapixels and higher sensitivities is our increasing ability to engineer the quantum physics of these semiconductors. Now, technology number four is the laser. In a laser, you apply voltage to specific mixtures of elements and excite the electrons, and then they give off light. This is amplified with mirrors and finally gives off very strong, focused, monochromatic light. The process that lasers use is called stimulated emission, where you promote an electron to a higher energy state in one atom, transfer it to another atom, and then those electrons get knocked down with a correctly tuned beam of light, which releases more light, which is all in phase. Now, to make a laser beam work, you need to find these elements that have very similar energy levels, again, which requires our understanding of quantum physics. Now, you might be wondering how you use laser beams every day, well, this video probably got to you through a fiber optic cable as a laser beam, as does a huge amount of web traffic these days. Now, last technology on my list, number five, is GPS technology. GPS relies on incredibly accurate clocks on GPS satellites. The satellites continuously broadcast their time and your phone takes these signals and can work out where it is on Earth depending on how long the signals took to get to it. The ticking of these atomic clocks depends on the frequency of a transition between two particular energy states in a cesium atom. Because the frequency of these clocks depends on the laws of nature, all of the clocks are exactly in time and are accurate to one second in 1.4 million years. So those are my five main technologies that perhaps you didn't know are based on the laws of quantum physics. But there's loads of other ones that we use in the world today. And because these days we do pretty much everything on computers, you could argue that the entire modern world exists because of our understanding of quantum physics, which is something I don't think many people appreciate, but I think is super cool. And in the future, there's more quantum technologies coming on, like quantum information, quantum computing, quantum metrology, and quantum simulation. And seeing how all of these develop is going to be, it's going to be very fascinating. 
Clearly, I'm a massive fan of quantum physics, but I think I'll give it a rest there. Thanks so much for watching. And if you'd like to support me, there's many different ways. Uh, you can buy a poster or a book. Uh, we've just released the new Professor Astrocat app. I'll link to all of that in the description below. And any support on Patreon is gratefully received. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.